Good morning and welcome to our teaching event. Uh, my name is Andy Azilo. I live in East London and attend church locally here in East London. I uh, hope you found last Saturday's classes helpful uh, where we're exploring uh, whether God uh, caused COVID-19 or just allowed it to happen uh, and also looking at suffering in relation to those things and I hope that day was helpful to you. It was certainly helpful to me. You know, today myself and Rob Payne will be uh, looking more at um, uh, how we could respond to the COVID-19 situation in our daily lives. So it's looking at um, how we can live today that will be uh, really in line with God's will in these, uh, in these, as a result of COVID-19. You know, COVID-19 has affected most of us in one way or another with varying degrees of severity. You know, as a business owner, the lockdown uh, resulted in my losing, I'd say about 50% of my monthly income. Uh, my wife lost all of hers. Um, I mean, prayerfully and thankfully God has provided as we have other sources of income, but it has been nevertheless challenging. Um, my brother lost his father-in-law and mother-in-law to COVID-19. His name was uh, Dr. James Onia and his wife was Mary Onia. She was um, a director of a number of care homes. So uh, both of them lost their lives, very painful time. And of course, we felt that uh, as being part of the family. You know, you too may have experienced some uh, life challenges as a result of COVID-19. I hope today's um, two talks will be helpful to you. Uh, I've selected a few scriptures that will hopefully help us. Help us. Um, I'm going to pick a, a, a scripture from Luke, which is Jesus' direct teaching or instruction uh, or a story that he tells. Uh, I'm going to look in the book of Acts and see how the early Christians, uh, the early church, or the, uh, the Christians there responded as they were obviously quite close to hearing what Jesus said. Great to learn from them. And finally, what we can apply in our lives today. Uh, I am looking at three areas. Uh, one is to do with uncertainty uh, brought on by COVID-19. Uh, the other is maintaining an internal perspective. Uh, during the pandemic and finally how we can serve others in these times you know starting off in Luke chapter 9 verse 57 where it reads as they were walking along the road a man said to him that is said to Jesus I will follow you wherever you go Jesus replied foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head I've entitled this section re-engaging with a life of uncertainty. You know, this man expressed a desire to follow Jesus, you know, a very noble uh, thing that he said. And, but Jesus pointed out to him, he said, you know, look at the foxes, look at the birds. Uh, they have a more predictable lifestyle than I have. Um, it was almost as if Jesus was discouraging this man from following him. You know, why was he telling him this? What's the relevance? You know, maybe the mindset of seeking security or seeking security first uh, will hinder us if we want to put God's will on first. And maybe what Jesus was trying to tell this, uh, this chat was, um, if you follow me, your life will be filled with uncertainty. This is not meant to be a cross that we bear or some uh, unnecessary challenge that Jesus puts forward. But I think the point he's trying to make is that, uh, you know, this is an opportunity that uh, we can put into practice where we trust God uh, to take care of our needs as we prioritize doing his will. In other words, the priority is to do his will, knowing that God will take care of us and that we need to embrace uncertainty if we want to thrive as Christians. In Acts chapter 8 we see an example where it reads on that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. You know the early church uh, we see that the, the Christians had been scattered due to the killing of Stephen and obviously they moved away from their homes and obviously incredible uncertainty. In Acts 8 verse 4 we read those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. So you get the sense that they had actually uh, learnt from Jesus because although they had been scattered and their lives could have been described as filled with uncertainty, they did what God asked of them first and they weren't distracted by the uncertainty. Uh, and this is an incredible quality. 
you know, the one thing COVID-19 certainly has done is bring uncertainty into our lives or to the forefront, you know, uncertainty associated with our health, our job security, our finances, supplies in the shops, you know, unable to control outcomes, which for many of us has brought on stress, worry, fear and anxiety. <clears throat> we want to be in control of outcomes. You know, I've mentioned earlier the impact of of COVID-19 and the lockdown on my family. Maybe you have experienced some incredible life challenges as a result of COVID-19. You know, how are you handling the current state of uncertainty? I hope you're handling it well. Are you overcome with stress, worry, fear, anxiety associated with COVID-19? I hope not. What is a faithful response to uncertainty? You know, in Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34, it's a wonderful discourse uh, by Jesus where he starts off by saying, do not be anxious about your life. You know, he draws attention to how God provides for all things, all creatures, particularly ourselves. If we seek him first, therefore do not worry. In Matthew 10, 28, it says, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. A reminder to put our physical lives into context. You know, learning mindfulness, focusing, focusing on the present, meditating on God's word, uh, learning what God has to say. You know, rather than not wanting uncertainty, maybe we should embrace uncertainty if we want to fulfill God's will. Uh, second area is in Luke chapter 10, verse 20. It says, However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. I've entitled this section, Retaining an Eternal Perspective. You know, Jesus sent out the disciples to heal and to teach, and on their return, they were filled with uh, joy because they'd seen many victories. Jesus, however, appears to be training the disciples to reorientate their focus. He notices that their joy level seemed to be linked to things going well for them. If so, the ups and downs of life will be the things that determine whether they have joy. You sense that Jesus may be being a bit too harsh here. Um, imagine if your children came home from school and said, Mom, Dad, I got five A stars and you said do not rejoice because you got five A stars rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven of course we, we can rejoice and uh, I don't think Jesus is saying don't be joyful or don't rejoice in these kind of things but I think he wants us to really recognize where the true joy comes from and that is steady and we can maintain that through our lives through the ups and downs you know, COVID-19 has certainly brought to the surface the issue of mortality and the pain and grief that it brings. The fact that many see death as the end heightens the sense of grief. You know, is this an opportunity for some of us to learn to rejoice in the right things or learn not to get down by the wrong things? In Acts 16, verse 25, it reads, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. You know, were they singing to distract themselves from their pain after being beaten and flogged? Um, how did they get to that place where they could be in uh, a prison, um, in chains, and still maintain a certain level of joy? Um, this, these are great lessons for us. You know, an old grandfather was teaching his grandson about life. He said to the little one, he said, a fight is going on inside me. It's a terrible battle between two wolves. One wolf is evil. He is fear, anger, selfishness, regret, self-pity, guilt, resentment, pride, and discontentment. The other is good. He's joy, peace, love, hope. Humility, kindness, selflessness, gratitude and faith. This same fight is going on inside you and every other person too. The child thought about this and asked, which wolf is going to win? You know, there's this fight between these two wolves and the boy says, which wolf is going to win? And the old man replied, the one you feed the most. The wolf that you feed the most will win. Well, what are you feeding yourself? You know, there's so many... Sources that come to us uh, through news, social media, our friends, what people are saying, and this can influence our level of joy. 
and uh, and yet God wants us to get our food from the right place. Uh, are you hearing what God is saying at this time? Are you hearing what God is asking you to be like or to do? Are you hearing what God is training in you? Or do you get your kind of food from other places? You know, one message for me in the mayhem is that, you know, just to remind that death is not the end. I remember speaking with a, a friend and a brother in church at Warner Baker many years ago knowing that he only had a few weeks to live and yet he seemed genuinely filled with joy. Of course, he was sad that he'd been leaving his family, but you couldn't, uh, you couldn't uh, not see his, 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 his joy at going to be with God forever. This was an incredible help to me just to see this kind of joy uh, lived out. Thirdly, in Luke chapter 10, verse 37, a very short phrase, it says, go and do likewise. You know, I've entitled this section, Rethinking What It Means to Love Our Neighbor. You know, Luke 10, verse 25 to 37 presents the popular story of the Good Samaritan. It starts with an expert in the law asking Jesus what he needs to do in order for him to inherit eternal life. Eternal life, that is life forever with God. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And that's in John chapter 7, verse 3, 17, verse 3, where Jesus gives some idea of, of what is eternal life and, and what this chap is asking for. You know, amidst the answer comes the call for the expert in the law to love your neighbor as yourself, to which the chap replied, who is my neighbor? And to a Jew, this would typically be another Jew or a convert to Judaism. <clears throat> the man would have been shocked by Jesus' reply, effectively using a person that the Jews despised as the example of a neighbor. You know, just like in the parable, Jesus is unearthing in us religious types, our tendencies to discriminate. He's calling us to see our unconscious bias, maybe. Do you treat people differently depending on their race, skin color, religion, social status, level of education, occupation, personality type? You know, we often create boundaries and a limit to, to who and how we, we love and care for other pe people. You know, in Acts chapter 10, you know, Peter was facing some challenges as he was asked to, to help a non-Jew. He was a Jew. And God was asking him to reach out to a non-Jew who he viewed as unclean. And in terms of the Jewish law and their traditions, that wasn't right for him to do. So there's a wrestling between should he help this type of person. You know, some people have called this passage of the conversion of Cornelius. Some have called it the conversion of Peter because Peter had to change his views. And he had to learn more about what it meant to love his neighbor. You know, I raise the next point. Not because it's COVID-19 related, but because it relates to loving our neighbor. <clears throat> and it's affecting so many people at this time, many even within our churches of black origin are feeling deep hurt and pain following the killing of George Floyd in America. What does loving our neighbor look like here? Well, maybe we can devote time to listen and understand their pain. Maybe we can offer to carry their burdens with them by acting on their concerns. You know, although my father is black uh, from Nigeria, my mother is from here, England, she's from Leeds. I grew up in Nigeria for a large part of my life um, with no issues undervaluing my race and identity. My wife, on the other hand, was born into a country where she experienced hatred and was fed negative vibes regarding her ethnicity. She also suffered racial abuse from authority figures in the British press and members of the public on a regular basis. Therefore, this is one area that I really wanted to share because I feel very weak in this area and I have a lot to learn in how to uh, uh, connect and how to empathize. You know, an incredible message for me in the mayhem is, is to learn how to connect with people who are in pain. In regard to go and do likewise, 
and step beyond our comfort zone. That is what God, I believe, is calling us to do. I hope you found uh, today's session helpful and uh, I'll now be handing over to Rob Payne to share some further thoughts. Thank you.